Well, let's move on a little bit and talk about the Electoral College. You mentioned it a bit earlier, Scott. Um, you commonly hear people ask if their vote really counts. I mean, if I go in, is my vote going to count? Because all you hear about on election night is the Electoral College and the states. And why can't they just count the votes? Why did we have to develop this system? Those are two very different questions, aren't they? Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you can't just count the votes because the system isn't set up that way, okay? Uh, the Constitution says that it is the Electoral College that matters. Um, so that's the short answer to that. Now, the more complex question is why did they set it up that way? Um, I mean, I personally, my study said that there's a, there's a few reasons for that. There's one is obviously, um, I guess, an elitist perspective where the founding fathers did not believe in democracy. Uh, they did not believe in the um, ability of the common man to make the choice. They, they looked at the common masses and said, this is a mob. We don't need them making these kinds of choices. So the Electoral College essentially acts as a filter um, to kind of keep the, um, the mob mentality under control to some degree because electors are not necessarily beholden to how mm -hmm. the people vote. So theoretically they could vote the other way. Now they normally don't, mm -hmm. but they could. Um, I would also suggest the Electoral College shows federalism. It gives the, you know, the people mm -hmm. vote um, at the base level, which is straight general democracy, but then electors are the voice of the state. So it is essentially an opportunity for the state to have their say-so in who is elected as the national president as well. Yeah, and I think to build on that, I think it's important to go back to our early history and, and we forget this now, except in a history classroom or mm -hmm. political science classroom, that our, you know, after the revolution and as we're kind of flailing away <laughs> trying, to, <laughs> trying to define ourselves as a nation, that we thought of ourselves really as 13 states, really 13 independent little countries. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly the Electoral College was designed to give the states a larger role in electing the president because the Constitution was creating this rather strong federal government, mm -hmm. which opponents of the Constitution said, well, this is what we fought against all those years in the Revolution. We don't want this. Proponents of it, certainly like James Madison and Alexander Hamilton, are going, yes, we've got to have this or we're not going to make it. And so this is sort of a compromise to give the states a larger role in electing the president. And I think as much as we may not like it, we see that because we see this election really coming down to eight states, swing states. Mm -hmm. They're different this time around than they were before. Uh, and we see those candidates uh, flying in and out of these states, holding rallies, running the TV ads, and we see that. So the original intent is there, but we live in a very different country now than 13 states. Now we have 50 states, hundreds of millions of people. And so the original intent is there, uh, but it is still odd. Does it still work? I would suggest yeah. that it does. Um, f when I look, go back and look yeah. at elections, there's only a handful where you have huge problems, where the, way the, the majority vote does not also win the Electoral College. I mean, 2000 obviously was an example of that. But before 2000, the last time that happened was 1888. I mean, you're going yeah. back over 100 years yeah. before you have another example yeah. of that. 1876 Six. before that, and then I would suggest 1824, mm -hmm. but you had four candidates uh, that time around, so you would have had some problems. Yeah. So four elections over the course of 220 plus mm -hmm. years, I think is pretty impressive. Um, and I would also suggest it still works because generally, whoever wins the Electoral College, generally, wins by a fairly decent margin in the Electoral College, which gives them the ability to have political collateral yeah. um, and be able to get some things done in those first days in office. And, and there is also the sense that it gives, when we do have a multi-candidate race, when we have a race beyond just the big two, like say 1992, where Ross Perot was a formidable third party candidate and got 19% of the vote, the popular vote. He didn't get any electoral votes. But that held Bill Clinton down to 43%, but Clinton won a decisive electoral majority to where it was essentially a landslide. And so it also protects a president in that situation where you may not win the popular vote with over 50% and get the majority vote, but you, you still have the authority to govern. Right. And I think that, that that's one of the protections of it. Well, let's yeah. talk about the breakdown and, and how they would ha what states they do have to win in order to win this election. Well, obviously there's 
a couple of really big ones. Um, I think the math has worked out where there are essentially 11 states um, that if you carry those 11, you can carry the whole show, um, basically. Florida qualifies there, Texas, uh, California, all those are the really big ones. New York would be another big one. Obviously, we've seen Ohio, um, Illinois, um, Virginia, North Carolina, Georgia, those cover most of the really big states. If you can get all of those in your column, then you've pretty much clinched the election. The problem is, is that you're not going to carry all of those. Um, Texas historically breaks conservative. Um, California historically, at least lately, breaks um, liberal. Um, so you've got 35, uh, 34 and 55 electoral votes there. Now you have to make that up somewhere else. Yeah, I think over the last, uh, particularly uh, in 2000, 2004, we saw these, were, they were very close elections. You know, even 2004 came down to one state, literally Ohio. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of a trifecta both in 2000 and 2004 of Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Florida, certainly in 2000. This year is a little shift uh, because it seems like uh, Michigan and Pennsylvania are going Obama, just from polling that they're pretty blue. Uh, Ohio is very much a swing state. Florida is once again tight. But then we've got Virginia this year, which has not been in play really in a long time. A Democrat hadn't carried Virginia since 1964, and Obama's leading. Um, so it's, it's, uh, uh, it is interesting. But like I said, any campaign knows at the beginning, John McCain knew Obama's going to carry California. Mm -hmm. uh, Obama knew at the beginning McCain's going to carry Texas. And so, uh, what about Tennessee? What are we poised to do this year? We're usually a red state. Mm -hmm. Do you think it'll stay that way? Yes. Yes. Uh, all <laughs> Tennessee <laughs> polling yes. has indicated we are we are red. Uh, we almost went pink on a couple of maps uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they'll do that if a candidate if the challenger gets within ten. Uh, but that was brief. Uh, it went back to red. Uh, McCain seems to have, from recent polling, about a 12-point lead here. I think, uh, personally, I think Obama's going to do better here than John Kerry did mm -hmm. in 2004. But we're a red state, and like I said, that's why we're the, the state that campaigns forgot. If Davidson year, County trends a little yeah, purple yeah, sometimes. Yeah. And, well, I think as far as Tennessee and the South, I think it's, it's important to remember, you know, when we talk about the Electoral College, we mention these big states. Mm -hmm. um, but you can almost treat the South in that respect as well. I mean, you've, the solid South is a term for a reason. Um, you know, you used to always be Democrat, now it's almost always Republican. Um, and so, for the most part, if you're John McCain, you can look at the map of the electoral votes in the South and basically count most of those without being too worried about it, particularly the Deep South states. Um, you know, the, the Georgias and the Alabamas and the Mississippi, those are those are locks without really any question. And so that's quite a few votes where you can afford to lose um, a Virginia mm -hmm. or a New York because you know in the aggregate you're going to make it up with the solid South.